what's up guys and welcome to a new tutorial today we're going to do the simulation of a delamination test and we're going to try to use cohesive elements so without any further ado let's start modeling so first we're going to make our specimen and the delamination test that we're going to do is the double cantilever beam so we go to mesh we make the beam from solid elements so the length of this guy is 160 the width is 12 and the height let's say 7 mm we control the size in x is 1 mm in y is 3 mm and in z is 2 mm and here we say lower beam and create and then accept okay it's supposed to be like this okay now instead of uh, make another one i just want to translate this one to the z positive direction and we will have the other beam go to element tools uh, transform translate into z and 7 mm is the height of the beam but here i want to put 7.05 why this 05 because this 05 will be the thickness or the height of the cohesive element so copy element by part and make it part number three then plus and there you go you have it okay if you click on the right view you see there is some gap the cohesive elements will be uh, in this gap so i hide this one first now to make the cohesive elements, I go to mesh, element generation, and then solid, and then by solid face track. Click by element, propagate, I have all the face here, the thickness 0 0.05, and I want only one segment. And then this one will be in the positive Z. And then I, if I create, you can see I have this small layer. Okay, I reject first, I want it to be part ID too. I select again here and create accept and then here you have it now you have the two beams and you have this layer is the cohesive elements but first you need to merge them so you go to element tool duplicate node show duplicate nodes and then merge then accept okay now almost done but i want the cohesive elements to be only around one 100 millimeter from this side so what i can do first i want to i go to here measure let's say i measure from here until here okay this is 110 if i go this one this the x coordinate is 96 okay so this you see the coordinate is 100 so i want to delete all the elements all the cohesive elements from here and until the end the left end so I'll go to element edit delete you just click by area like this first you just click everything and then you go by part and then right click here and right click here then delete now you see you have a gap okay why we do the gap like this because that's the setting of the double cantilever beam test all right so now we go to our model go to create entity so here set node this part will be fixed so here i say fixed and and then by element okay we're selecting everything apply and then we go to the other side now i select by edge i select by edge propagate here upper end apply here lower end and then apply okay then i go to keyword okay first we start with the easy things click on all then i go to boundary spc set Fix the first node set, and then I say fix, 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 and and it's fixed in all degree of freedoms. Then set boundary prescribed motion set. Okay, so new. I say this is the upper end, the blue one. This is the upper end. This time I want to apply the velocity. I don't have any curve, so it's okay. I can create curve new velocity, and then when times zero, this one is one. 
insert one times ten the velocity also is one insert and then accept here upper edge moving except the new id instead of upper i put lower i change this one and then degree of freedom this one should be negative degree of freedom should be three forgot to change that one here should be equal to three okay now we are done with the risk height now i want to define the section section solid now this one for the cantilever beam solid the default should be okay but we can here i want to use fully integrated elements for the uh, for the beam and then for the cohesive elements add cohesive section i use section number 19 okay you see here number 19 is four point cohesive elements and then accept okay, now we go to the material Okay, for this beam, I want to use material number 2, orthotropic elastic. Okay, this one is actually carbon fiber. The density is 1.5 minus 6. We are using our usual units, kilograms and millimeters. This is 40 giga, 40 giga. This is only 8. Poison ratio 0 0.04, 0 0.002, 0 0.008. This one is 4.1, 4.1, 4.1. Okay, here AOP, I want to make it zero. Locally orthotropic, meaning the material axis is determined for each element. So each element might have different axis, and the axis will change as the material deforms. This one is optional, no need, and this one also no need. Here the material axis switch, I just make it one and then accept. A new ID, I make it uh, material ID 3. Here I want to switch the axis and put it 3. Why I'm using two materials? Because I want to show that switching the axis will actually change the deformation of the material. So here axis switched. Okay, now we define the cohesive material and the material is 138. Cohesive mix mode, new, make it number 2. This is cohesive. Material. density is the same e minus 6 this one is 0 because our cohesive element already have volume if your cohesive element doesn't have any initial volume then you put it equal to 1 okay number of integration point to failure just put it 1 1 is 10 the stiffness normal the tangential stiffness also 10 the energy release 0 0.0015 Okay, it is the same and this is one the exponent is the default and this is 0 0.018 this also 0 0.018 and, uh, this one 0 point, zero, sorry, 0 0.16667 here also the same these two are the ultimate displacement in the normal and tangential direction and these two are the peak traction in normal and tangential direction except none okay so now we define the control commands, go to all, collapse all, go to control, I want the accuracy to be high, so I put here is 1, here 4, set, and then control, oh, this cost D, this I put it minus 2, and then control our class, the default is ok, except done, and then now go to control termination, and I put this 10 milliseconds, then now I define the database output, database d3 plot, make it 0 0.1, and then SQ options 0 0.01, and what I want is the boundary forces, and accept. And I think that's all, control save, save the desktop, here double cantilever beam, here cohesive elements. Okay, we almost forgot. We need to assign the guys. Here we have lower beam, cohesive elements, and then upper beam. So part here, this is lower beam, solid, fully integrated solid. Here is carbon fiber. And this one is the cohesive elements, cohesive material with a cohesive layer. Except in this, or I can delete it was made by mistake here upper beam and 
then section solid fully integrated solid and carbon fiber switch access okay so now i save i think this should do and then i run it it will take some time so i'm going to fast forward okay now we have a normal termination and it took five minutes and 30 seconds now let's see the results okay it looks nice so far so good to see the cohesive elements you need to zoom in to see here the cohesive elements okay, they are stretched and then being deleted of course you can try a more fine mesh but here i use big size elements so that the simulation doesn't take long time i go to setting post setting and then i want to show you how to use this one reflection so now we want to reflect in z and x and then apply you see if i apply if i reset this is the model that we made and if we use reflect now you see it become wider so using this reflect you can model only half of the problem okay now i want to see from the right if you look carefully actually you can see that there is a difference between the deformation of the two layers and the reason behind this is because we switch the axis of the material and if we look at the let's say the stresses you can see that the lower material have higher stress because of the orientation of the axis is different now i want to try to plot here plot all the forces Okay, we have all the forces like this so i can go to operate and then sum the curves it looks very ugly so i go to filter let's say i put here nine this filter sap and our time in millisecond and i put 600 now i have a better curve all right so i think that's all what i want to show you from this model now I want to go back here and modify this guy. First I save the different folder, say type, then accept type S to S. Okay, this second simulation that we're going to do is for simple people like me. If you are a simple person and you don't want to use the cohesive elements, we're going to use contact between the two beams instead of the cohesive elements. So what I want to do here first, I want to create a segment in the upper beam and in the lower beam. And the contact will be between these two segments. First I go to element tools and blank, then I blank this side. Then click on F2, hide this and hide this, then create entity, set data, segment, create, upper beam, create by element, propagate, click here and then accept. Alright, then now click on the lower beam, you will hide this one first, then create by element, propagate, click and then we we'll call this lower beam then accept now here we have both of them okay both of the segment now click on f2 it can show everything and uh, also i go to keyword i don't need the cohesive elements in this second simulation so i go here and then delete cohesive layer Go to element tools, blank, and blank all. Alright, so I go now, model, edit keyword, all, and then go to contact, tie break, surface to surface, DYD, and here I would say tie break. Segment is here, this is zero, zero, both master and slave are segments, and here is two and here is the tensile stress failure i will just put it 3.36 here also 3.036 and then actually that's all then accept then done and we save this guy open here browse then tie break tight and run this guy and again this will take some time so i'm going to fast forward 
Okay, finally the simulation has finished. So let's see what we got. So again, I go to setting, post setting, reflection, and apply. So now we have our fat beam. Okay, right, view. Okay, we see the stresses. It's a bit different from the previous case. Now we want to see the forces. Boundary output, load all the forces. Okay, it's a bit different. We can tell from here already, but when we sum the curve, we get something similar. Okay, now we filter out using the same setting of the filters and then apply. So we get a similar trend, although it's not the same uh, values here and here. So you can see we get similar trend, but not the same values. Here the maximum with cohesive elements, the maximum is 0.3. And with the tie break surface to surface contact, the maximum is only 0.25. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.